Hi everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I'm going to tell you all about my 2021 reading goals. So you may notice that I have a completely different background today to any previous videos and that is because I have finally finished moving into my new flat. There will be a moving vlog or two coming very soon and I'm not completely sure where I'm going to be filming yet. This is where we're filming for today. It's a work in progress. I'm not quite sure like where I'm gonna make a good filming setup, but we'll work that out. But it does feel very appropriate to be doing my first video in my new flat whilst filming my first of my sort of end of the year, new year videos and sort of new year resolution things. So as I said, this video is going to be talking about my 2021 reading goals. I'm not setting myself too many goals for next year. If I haven't said it enough times, I'm gonna be extremely busy in 2021, at least for the first couple of months. The job I am starting on literally the 4th of January is gonna be very, very intense, very long hours. I don't know how much time I'm going to have for reading and YouTube and everything else. It's all gonna be kind of play it by ear, work it out as I go. And so I don't wanna put too much pressure on myself, but I still have some goals I want to hit because I wanna achieve a lot in 2021 if I can. But I will say now, although I am setting these goals more so than any previous year, I am not going to be holding myself to them or putting too much pressure on myself if I don't feel like I am hitting them. Normally, for example, with the number of books I read, I kind of really, really want to work towards hitting it and put a lot of effort into it. This year, if I'm getting nowhere close, I'm getting nowhere close. It doesn't matter, it is what it is. I've read a huge amount for the past few years. I've been doing sort of almost 100 books a year, if not more. And so this year, we're gonna scale it way down and it's gonna be low pressure. I do still want to challenge myself though. I don't want to end up falling into a slump. I'm someone who is generally very much driven by goals and achievements and things like that. And so I really do wanna make sure that I'm achieving good things and pushing myself whilst not making reading stressful because obviously it's one of my greatest hobbies. It's something that I use as stress relief a lot. So if that in itself is stressful, I will just end up not reading at all, which is completely not the point. So I guess the easiest place to start is just how many books I'm setting myself as a goal to read in 2021. And my goal is going to be 52. So one book a week, that's it. That is what I'm aiming for. And honestly, I think that's actually about right. I would love to say that I'm gonna hit 100 again and who knows, maybe I will. But if I'm working very long hours, Monday to Friday, I may only have the weekends free. And most books I can read the majority of the book in two days. So I may be able to read like a little bit each day during the week and then finish the book off during the weekend is kind of what I'm envisaging. But I will say I've not tried this job yet. Who knows? Maybe I will have time in the evenings and I will be able to get through a lot more. But that's kind of where my head is at and that's kind of what I'm thinking. Try and aim to do one book a week, which should be possible with the weekends. And overall that should get me to 52, which is a very good number, which I'll be very, very happy with. Obviously significantly down from my goal of 100, which I've had for the last two years, though technically my goal for 2020 was 72 at the start of the year, though it got boosted to 100 very quickly. But yeah, that, that's the plan. 52 should be very attainable, hopefully. We will see. Again, no pressure, no anything. If I read 10 books next year, I'll be thrilled. I'm just trying to keep myself reading and keep myself challenged and interested where I can. In terms of sort of the amount I read, I'm also really sort of backtracking from what I said in 2020. In 2020, I had a goal of reading 100 pages a day slash reading for about an hour a day. That was what I really wanted was to give myself like a dedicated hour every day where I read. And I definitely didn't do that every day, but it was a nice thing to have in mind to, I guess, put the effort into reading instead of doing it in a more passive way of just pick up a book when I feel like it. It was more of a, if I can find an hour, spend that hour specifically reading and kind of making an effort to read and enjoying it specifically for what it is instead of just doing it whenever I fancy. And that worked really well for me absolutely no goals are being made this year in terms of what I read each day. That would just be a nightmare. I think my reading is going to be very much nothing all week, lots on a weekend. We hope, who knows? So I think setting a sort of daily reading goal will just end in disaster. So I'm not doing that this year. I would love to say like read every single day or read for half an hour every day, even something really small like that. Like I did consider setting a read every single day goal, even if it's one page but I just know that some days I will be too mentally tired and all I want to do is watch some Netflix and go to sleep. And that is fine. That is a completely okay thing to do and I'd be very happy to do that. So yeah, no daily reading goals. We'll just read when we can, when we feel like it. That's it. In terms of what I'm reading, I'm not too worried about sort of the genres and stuff I'm reading. I read a lot of fantasy. I also read quite a lot of contemporary, especially YA contemporary. I do, continuing on from what I've done in 2020, I do want to continue with more adult fantasy and adult sort of contemporary literary fiction. 
but I don't think this is the year to go too hard on that because if I'm feeling drained and tired I don't want to read anything too complex I want to read something fun and a bit lighter which YA and sort of even some adult fantasy just not epic fantasy works very well for so I'm kind of happy with where I'm at which is doing about 50 50 between adult and YA that seems to be working well for me I do think there is a chance I will start leaning more towards adult because I have discovered adult fantasy romance which is a perfect in-between for when I'm feeling tired. So we'll see but I'm really not too bothered about genre and age range and things like that. I really think mood reading is going to be the way to go this year and I say mood reading I'll still set TBRs every month, Dust Attack will still be happening, don't worry but it's more of a pick each month what I'm feeling like instead of like have a quota to fulfill because I just don't think that would go well for me and I know for example when I've done readathons in the past where it's really prescriptive and you have to do certain books in certain orders I get a few books in and I just can't do it because I need a bit of flexibility in my reading even with a set TBR for the month I can't read in a certain order my brain doesn't like it it doesn't work for me but in terms of content I'm reading there is definitely one massive goal I am setting myself and that is to finish some damn series. I have read quite a lot this year, I've already read 104, 105 books, something like that, and as far as I know I have finished one series. I may be remembering wrong, I will need to double check Goodreads, but I think I've literally finished one series all year and barely any others have I even continued past the first book. I have started so many series and some of them I'm not interested in continuing or the next book isn't out yet and that's fine but oh my god the number of series I have started and yet I haven't finished really any let alone continued with any and it's frustrating me so much because it's utterly ridiculous there's no good reason for me to not continue with series I love series I really really enjoy these long stories and yet I keep just picking up new series instead of continuing the ones I've already read so that is my biggest goal for 2021 is to read some series in full. There are a lot of series now that have come out and like all the books are out or at least the first few are out which are ones I've been kind of waiting so I can read a few at once because I struggle with my memory to read series like a year and a bit between books so I like being able to binge read a little bit more. So I have a whole list of series I'm going to try and read in 2021 but there will be a whole video for that probably coming later this week so that be a separate video because if I start talking now about the huge list of series I want to get through it's going to be too long for this video. But yeah that is definitely one of my biggest goals is to just read series because I don't know why I've fallen out of the habit of it. I used to read almost exclusively series, I'd barely ever read standalones or at least like most of the books I'd be reading were series and all of a sudden in 2020 I just didn't do it. I just kept putting series down, I never finished them, I just got distracted by something else and something new. I think starting booktube did contribute to this because there's so much hype around so many different things that my brain kept kind of jumping between them and wanting to try everything instead of just focusing. So I really really want to read some series in 2021 and maybe I will only finish one or two of them, maybe I'll start halfway through, maybe I'll DNF halfway through, I have no idea but I guess I just want to make a concerted effort to try and read some series so that at least maybe I can do some. We will see. Another reason I want to do this as well is because as I've mentioned so many of the series which I've like read a first book and loved have now got further books in the series or the series has even completed and I want to read them but because there's so many new releases I don't prioritise reading backlists just because I get so distracted by all the new exciting books and I know I would love these series and it's really really starting to frustrate me and I worry that it'll get to a point where I never get around to them. So this is the year we're going to do some serious catch up work and there are literally, I could probably list about 30 series that I need to read, I'm not putting that many on this list, you'll see in the video later this week how many I am putting on, but I just want to do some, just some of the top priority ones to get to either really hyped ones or ones I know I will like because I've read the first book, anything like that, just get some series checked off it'll make me happy, it's a thing I really want to do and it also slightly gives me an idea of what I'm going to read throughout the year because I do find I have such a huge collection of books though a lot less at this flat that I never know exactly what to pick up and I'm pretty good at finding something to pick up. Data Tag helps me in this, it's one of the reasons I do it is because it gives me guidance to help me choose what to read because I'm very indecisive so it does help in that regard but I quite like when I'm maybe a bit more tired and don't have the time and energy to think too hard about what I want to read I just have this go-to list of series and I'll be like you know what I need to read book two in that series let's just do that now. So I'm hoping it will also help me in that sense but who the hell knows we will see next year. The next goal I have is a little bit different it is to do with what I'm reading but it's also to do with books I'm buying. 
I'm not going on a book buying run or anything like that, don't worry, I couldn't do it. Maybe one day, not right now. I personally really enjoy buying books, it's just something I really really like and I actually see it as almost a separate hobby to reading, it's just something I enjoy doing in itself, hence why I end up with collections of books that I really like. But I don't want to overwhelm myself too much. As I've mentioned, I do have a huge book collection at home and I'm sure some of those will be coming to this flat like back and forth over the year, I'm sure that will happen. But I also don't want to overwhelm myself here. I think I have about maybe two, two and a half, three empty shelves on my bookcases. Plus I do have the book cart just over there, which doesn't have any books on it yet. So I do have a little bit of breathing room, but I don't want to be buying so many books that I fill it up and then just have so much to choose from. I love having choice when I read. I have huge respect for people who have this like physical TBR of 10 books. I couldn't do it. With being a little bit of a mood reader, I have to have this like huge variety and wealth of choice. It just works better for me. And also I do find if I have a book on like my read really soon list for more than a couple months, I lose interest in it. And I have to kind of put it on the back burner for a few months and then bring it back out. And so I kind of have this ever rotating pile of books which seem interesting to me. And that's just how I work. So we're gonna go with that. But I don't wanna get too many. I'm gonna maybe try and tone down my book buying a little bit, but not to a specific number. I'm going to try and do the same thing I did in 2020, which is to buy the same number of books or less than I read. That's all I want to achieve. That's normally my aim. That's what I tried to do in 2020 and it was worked really well for me. I definitely didn't succeed every month, but I did succeed in others. And it just means that overall my total physical owned TBR won't be getting too out of hand. I don't mind if it grows a little bit. I would quite happily have it shrink a little bit because it is very, very excessive. But I do just like the idea of not bringing in so many more books that I'm currently reading because I don't find it stressful. I'm not someone that gets stressed out by a huge TBR, but it has got to the point where because I have such a huge TBR, it does feel a little bit unnecessary, but I also like buying books, so I make no promises. But I will just say this balancing act of buying less books than I read, or at least roughly the same amount, has been made a little bit harder recently because all of you wonderful people who I thank so much have been sending me things off my wish list. I'm guessing because it's around Christmas time, so I'm guessing this will massively drop off very soon. And although I love that and I am going to keep my wish list open, I love having it open and obviously it's nice because I don't have to buy the books myself and feel guilty, it does slightly affect that balancing act. So I haven't completely decided whether I'm going to include wish list books in that kind of balancing act for myself or whether it's only going to be the books like I have control over buying. But we'll see. I guess if one month books sent to me plus books I buy for myself still work out as less than books I read, then I'll be like, woohoo, look at that success. And if it doesn't, then I'll blame it on you guys and not myself. So I guess I can use that as an out if I need to. But again, I'm not so worried about it that that's going to like impact me, it's not gonna make me stress if I get a ton of books sent to me, which I don't envisage happening at all, but just in the last few weeks I've had far more than I ever expected, so I guess I can definitely say you never know, but yeah, don't worry about sending me things if you want to, that is not what I'm trying to say, and I'm not closing my wish list or anything like that at this point, but I guess just if you see me doing a wrap up of five books and a haul of ten, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm breaking this goal. Kinda. Close enough anyway. But the other thing I'm going to try and very vaguely stick to, which is the thing again I've tried this year, is I guess reading books in a timely manner from acquiring them. I personally am rubbish. I will either read the book the day it gets here or not read it for five years. I am awful at this. And again, I've done much better in 2020. I have read maybe around 50% of the books that I've bought this year slash received this year within this same year, which I'm pretty happy with. And I think I'm aiming for roughly that number again, though I would imagine it may be a bit lower because I'm reading a lot of backlist books, which I already own because they're series which I've owned for a while and wanted to read for a while. So I do think there is a decent chance that this number may be lower than 50%, but I guess it's just more having an awareness, even if not a set threshold of try to keep track of the books that are coming in and the books I'm reading and check that I'm not just buying them, putting them on my shelves and forgetting their existence. And this all works out well in my reading journal. I'm gonna be doing a whole video later this week setting up my 2021 reading journal because it is going to be a little bit different than my 2020 reading journal. And I am gonna have a whole kind of area dedicated to this, but I, I kind of already did in my 2020 journal. I always wrote down every book I buy each month or receive each month. And then I highlight them once I've read them so I can go back and look and see like how many are highlighted, how many aren't. And as I said, I think about the 50%-ish mark. And I'm gonna be trying for the same thing next year. Obviously it's gonna be very variable. So like the books I get in December, I'm not gonna have read 50% of them before the end of the year. That's just never gonna happen. But as I said, it's having more of an awareness about reading the books you buy instead of letting them sit on your shelves forever because that is definitely something I've done 
more in the past than recently. I'm much better now at reading the books when I get them. But I just want to keep that in mind when buying books and when choosing which books to read that maybe have a look at which books you bought six months ago and have completely forgotten that you even have and try and read some of those. The probably final kind of goal I'm setting myself is to be better with DNFing books. This year I've kind of got away with it. I have had a lot of free time between Covid and finishing my uni degree and all of this. So I can kind of get away with just, even if I'm not enjoying a book, just finishing it anyway. And I have only DNF'd like two books this year, if even that. I I struggle as well, I've mentioned this before, because I kind of class a DNF and putting a book down as differently. DNF is where I've put it down with no intention of ever picking it back up. Whereas putting a book down, I will regularly read maybe a hundred pages, maybe even half a book, and just because I'm a bit of a mood reader, no, I'm not feeling it right then but I will absolutely know that there is a good chance that in six months I'll be feeling more up to it and would fancy it then. So I don't want to like get rid of it or put it down permanently, but I do put it down temporarily. So I class that differently to a DNF, but even that I want to get better at doing. I, as I said, I barely DNF anything, even if I'm not enjoying it, there is always this teeny, teeny, tiny ounce of curiosity, which keeps me reading. It makes me just want to know what exactly is going to happen. And it's normally the pettiest, smallest thing. And if I just put the book down, I'd probably forget about it in five minutes, but it just makes me keep reading. And that may sound like a good thing. It's like, oh, it's piqued your interest. It hasn't. I'm normally bored, witless reading books like this, but I just feel like I'm gonna frustrate myself if I don't know how it ends. But I have found this year, there's been quite a few books which I've put down sort of temporarily and then within 10 minutes of reading something else, I no longer care and I could happily never go back to it. So I think what I'm going to try and do to kind of ease myself into DNFing and knowing that I'm not going to know what happens is practice and kind of keep getting better at putting a book down, picking up something else in the meantime whilst deciding what I want to do about that book. And then maybe a day later kind of judging, am I interested? Do I actually want to go back to this or am I just going to call it a day? And I think the reason I've partially fallen into not doing that is because I tend to read very linearly. I pick up a book, I finish a book, I pick up the next book, I finish that one. I rarely am someone that has multiple books on the go at once. I may have multiple on my currently reading, but I will very much stop one, read another to completion and then pick that one back up. And so I guess I just need to get in the habit of any time I'm not loving a book, putting it down, reading something else, by the time I finish that next book, being like, do I care to go back to it? If the answer is no, just stop. I need to stop making myself read things I'm not interested in. And this does sound more dramatic than it is. I'm not here forcing myself to read books I hate. If it's pissing me off, I'll put it down, no question. But there definitely have been a lot of books. One that springs to mind specifically is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, where I was bored the whole way through, but because everyone hyped it so much and spoke about it so much, I was like, maybe I'm missing the point, keep reading. It bored me all the way to the end. So things like that, I need to get better at putting down, waiting a day, two days, a week. And if I'm still not interested in picking them back up, stop reading them because that has definitely been responsible for me reading a lot less this year than I could have because I regularly would force myself to keep reading a book like that. And with something like that, I am not going to be reading more than 20 pages a day because I just can't make myself pick it up because I'm not interested. And then that massively slows me down because it'll probably take me over a week to read that book when I could have read something else in two days. And that frustrates me. So I'm going to try and do better with this. I make no guarantees that I'm going to start DNFing books left, right and centre. It's certainly not something I am keen to do too much because I am always curious and I don't like giving up on a book knowing that maybe the ending won't be like it. But with the very limited time and mental energy I'm going to have, I'm not wasting it on something I'm not enjoying. So I'm going to really, really try and work on doing that more this year. So that's pretty much it for my 2021 goals. Other than that, the only other thing I kind of have in mind is, as I said, just kind of a little bit challenging myself. So most of the time I'm going to be mood reading. I'm going to be reading what I feel like. It's going to be a lot of fun books. It may be some more intense ones, but mainly just whatever I'm feeling like. But I do really want to try and read just like a couple of classics a couple of like hard hitting adult and then maybe some like proper adult epic high fantasy, probably Brandon Sanderson because I do want to catch up on it. Originally I had planned in 2021 to have the whole year as like a catch up on Brandon Sanderson year. Absolutely not. It's not the year for it. Maybe in six months I'll realise I have tons of free time and energy and we'll do it and it'll be great. But for now that is not a goal I'm setting. But I do just again want to keep in mind challenging myself and furthering myself with my reading and I 100% do not believe you have to read classics to be a reader or anything remotely like that. However, I do think there are some classics I would actually really enjoy and I put them off because I feel like they're intimidating and I'm going to find them really difficult. 
So I guess just literally one or two throughout the year I'd like to push myself. Just some like really short, almost like sci-fi classics or something. So it's a bit more accessible to what I'm familiar with. And we're gonna try and do something like that. Just again, to further myself as a reader, keep myself reading, keep myself interested and stretch myself a bit. I think it's just a good challenge to have and hopefully I will do it because I did say I was gonna read like five classics this year and I picked up precisely zero. So we'll see if I actually do it, but it's again, it's not a set goal for a specific number and like I have to cross it off. It's just a thing I would like to keep in mind when choosing what books I'm reading and we'll see if I can achieve it. One other kind of not quite goal, but thing I guess I wanna talk about in terms of my reading in 2021 is readathons. I love readathons but I think I'm gonna have to be more selective in which ones I take part in. I say this knowing already what I wanna do in January. I love them so much and they do motivate me, but I haven't successfully completed a readathon in like six months. I used to do so well with them and I just don't anymore. I don't quite have the time, I don't quite have the capacity and I feel like the kind of pressure it puts on me sometimes puts me off reading. So I'm just gonna be very selective in which ones I do. Instead of pushing myself to do the hardest option in a readathon, I'm gonna kind of tap out and do the easier one so I can take part. I love the community feel of them, but we're not going too mad with it. Again, I think this whole year is just about limiting my expectations, limiting the pressure so that I can actually enjoy reading and do it properly instead of ruining myself, which is what I've tried to do in 2020, basically. And then one more thing I wanted to say, which is kind of not a reading goal, but is related, is I, it's kind of a strange one to say, but as some of you may know, I host a book club called the Face and Gaze Book Club with Cecilia from Cecilia Reads and Sandra at Got A Thing For Things. And I guess just like an informal goal is I want to see how far we can take that. It's been doing really well. We have a decent amount of people in the Discord. If you want to join the Discord and chat about especially LGBT fantasy books a lot, but any books, please join. The link is down below as it always is. And we would love to have you there. But we've got a pretty decent community there. We get people turning up to the live shows. We need to be more active on Twitter and that's on all of us. But I guess I would just really like to see what we can do for that. We've got some really cool plans for 2021. Like the books we're reading are gonna be really, really good. But we have a few extra little things in the works that we would like to see. And you may never hear about any of them. Loads of them may not work out. But I guess it's just a thing for me that I would really like to see how far it could go because I'm loving doing it so much and I love doing it with Sandra and Cecilia and I'd be really, really intrigued to see if we can do more with it. But also take part if you want to because it's amazing and we're reading some phenomenal books in 2021 and I'm so excited to read all of them and discuss them with all of you guys. So please do check out the Face and Gaze book club. As always, Twitter, Discord, etc. linked below if you want to. It's great, it's a fun time. We'd love to have you on board. But yeah, that is definitely all the goals I'm setting. I realize this is quite a long video for the number of goals I'm setting, but as always, I rambled. But I think that is it. So thank you so much for watching. What are your 2021 goals? I would really, really love to know how many books you're planning to read. Are you planning to scale it down? Are you planning to push yourself further? What kind of books are you wanting to read? Just let me know. I would love to know what everyone else is doing. And if anyone has a really cool idea for a goal, I would love to hear it because I may steal it myself for future. But that's it for the video. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. All the information for read-alongs and book clubs that I host is linked down in the description. So check that out if you want to take part in anything. But that is it for this video. So bye and I'll see you in the next one.